working on uh, one of the glove box experiments called the FSGC, Fiber Supported Droplet Combustion. This is one of the uh, numerous glove box experiments that comes out of the NASA Lewis Research Center up in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. And over half of the experiments and the uh, principal investigators, scientists working uh, to put this mission together have come from the NASA Lewis Research Center. And we'd like to acknowledge their efforts today as we uh, perform one of their combustion experiments. In this one, we're supporting a, uh, a little small uh, drop of, of fuel, about a millimeter or so in size, half an inch across, on a small fiber, and uh, igniting it and watching uh, the different burning characteristics. This is yet another combustion experiment. This one is the droplet combustion experiment. The goal here is to understand the droplet burning process. And so to do that, we ignite the single heptane fuel droplets in an oxidizing mixture. We want to understand combustion so we can make uh, more efficient combustion using devices. We had uh, several good burns today. We had problem with one burn because uh, the droplet didn't deploy properly, but it's a very complicated process that re requires a lot of elegance in timing, and so it's not surprising that we only had uh, three out of four good burns today. Okay, we have some internet questions we'd like to answer. The first one is from young eight-year-old Lindsay O'Brien from New Hampshire. And Lindsay asks, have you, have you or any members of your crew ever considered bringing bats on board? She's curious to find out which way bats would hang when they are at rest. Well, Lindsay, I'm not sure any of us have considered taking bats with us on board, but I think that uh, it's Important to note that while we're in space, there is no such thing as the ceiling or the floor or the wall. Everything can become whichever one you want them to. For instance, if I was to stand on what you would think of as the ceiling for a long time, pretty soon that would become the floor to me. So bats could pretty much hang wherever they wanted to. I have an internet question from an art little field from Melbourne, Florida, not far from uh, Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center where we took off just a few days ago. And Art asks the question, uh, who is responsible for thinking of and planning the experiments which we conduct on the mission? Art, as you can imagine, it's no one person. Uh, this is a team of thousands and thousands of people, not only across uh, the great country of America, but around the world. We have an international payload here with experiments from Japan, Germany, the rest of Europe, and all across the United States. And we're represented by many universities and uh, technical fields all across America. The, the research uh, is conducted by these different organizations, and the planning goes on at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama. As you can imagine, planning for a mission this complicated takes uh, quite a long time. And those folks that were working on this mission long before we were ever assigned to it. So we'd like to acknowledge their great efforts. Uh, they've been working on this mission many, many years, getting it prepared and selecting the experiments and getting them packed on board for us to fly this uh, over the 16-day flight. Next question is from Linda Owens of Miami, Florida. And she asks, how dangerous are your combustion experiments considering they are taking place within the shuttle? And uh, the answer to the question is that Fire, of course, has to be dealt with very carefully under any circumstance, especially aboard an orbiting spacecraft. Because of that, the scientists and the engineers who designed the experiments were very, very careful to make sure that the experiments are very safe and have many levels of containment so that it would be very highly improbable that the fire could get out of the combustion chambers that they're contained in. So it's really a tribute to the engineers and scientists at NASA and other organizations that the experiments are so safe. Thanks, Ed, for letting me do the extra drops. That was fun. Copy. It was fun to see on the ground.
Space Lab, Hunt, Phil from Greg. Yeah, go ahead, Alan. I'm just looking at the PCAP, trying to figure out what the next test point is here. Copy that. And the next test point is 10, 20, 20, Charlie. And because of that, since it's not in sequence, you will need to hit new test point, not next test point this time. Stabilization time, 12 minutes. Great, thanks, Alan. That's what I was trying to figure out. Okay, that's complete. I want to check that the cell range pop-up screen appeared. And I have that. And we'd like you to enter 6-0 decimal zero. And that's complete. And you can enter OK. Hey, we were successful uh, again with Mike Full. Uh, once again, however, it's only about a 30 or 45 second contact. I could hear him for much longer than that, but he could not hear me. I also heard him trying to make contact with Houston. Uh, I couldn't tell if he was successful or not in doing that. W5RRR was who he's trying to call. Uh, what was neat about it, at the same time I was talking, uh, Susan uh, had the binoculars out the window uh, watching the a mirror come up above the right wing, just like you said it would, and it was just spectacular. Great. How's Mike doing? He sounds in fantastic spirits. Uh, on both passes, we didn't really get a chance to establish two-way comp. It was just a short period of time where we were actually both talking to each other. The other period of time, I was able to hear him, but he couldn't hear me. He transmitted in the blind best wishes to uh, me and the crew for a successful flight and a uh, successful landing and uh, of course I, uh, I I passed on the same to him but I'm not sure if he was able to hear me but uh, appreciate y'all setting it up it, it was it was a lot of fun Mark, I think um, watching this with the crew aboard a space shuttle orbiting the Earth is a, a great example of how robots and humans can work together with, uh, with the Pathfinder leading the way for humans to, uh, to come in its footsteps uh, sometime in the, hopefully, uh, near future. Well, Mike, we share those sentiments, and it's certainly an auspicious uh, beginning for the return to Mars. Uh, so far, everything looks like it's going just uh, perfectly, and uh, we also have seen pictures of uh, full of scientists at JPL who are absolutely ecstatic.